It's always good to be with all of you as Christmas draws near. It's good this morning especially to be with Monsignor Holmes, who pastors the Cathedral Parish so well, with Canon Pintabone, who brings us the joy of himself and also the joy of New York on this Gaudete Sunday of joy. And I'm happy that we have with us this morning Ryan Coster. Where is Ryan? Back there. Ryan is the one you don't know. He's actually been here before. He's a seminarian from the Pontifical College Josephinum. And Ryan will be ordained a deacon on May the 17th. So we might all keep him in his prayers as he moves closer and closer to the altar. He's the master of ceremonies for the community at the Josephinum Seminary, and so he can certainly handle us here this morning, uh, helping the bishop through the ceremonies. And it's always good to see Ryan, and I'm grateful for his presence. Now, the book of Nehemiah, the book of Chronicles, neither of which we've heard this morning, have a wonderful, wonderful prayer in them. And the prayer goes simply, let the joy of the Lord be our strength. And as a matter of fact, in many of the translations, for instance, both in Spanish and in Italian, that phrase is inserted at the time of the final dismissal. The Mass is ended, let the joy of the Lord be our strength, and let us go in peace. As a matter of fact, I just heard that the other evening at our Guadalupe celebration. So it's in the liturgy. I've been known before the new translation came out to insert it into ours. Blessed John Paul never left that out when he was celebrating Mass privately. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength, and let us go in peace. And that is the perfect attitude with which we should leave Mass. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength, and on the Sunday of joy, Gaudete Sunday, we should reflect on that for a minute. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength sums up the whole first reading. We hear about joy breaking forth and immediately hear, strengthen your weak knees. Strengthen your weak knees. Be strong, fear not. Joy and strength go together. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. And so... Sometimes when we feel so weak in times of temptation, we might ask ourselves, where's the joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. I feel so weak. Maybe I also don't feel very joyful. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. And in the Gospel, we have that very interesting saying of Jesus, and blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. Could also be translated, blessed is the one who is not scandalized by me. Blessed is the one who is not led into sin because of me. And indeed, many people in the scriptures 
were led into sin because of Jesus. When he said, You must eat my flesh and drink my blood, and so you will have life. Where does he get all of this? The Gospel writer says, He was too much for them. He came to bring salvation. But some people reacted sinfully to Jesus so as to merit their own condemnation. They were the ones who took offense at Jesus. They were the ones who were scandalized. They were the ones who were led into sin because of him. If we have joy, which is our strength, we would never take offense at Jesus. Jesus is joy in itself. No joyful person could ever be led to sin because of Jesus. It's impossible. Blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. Another way of saying blessed is the joyful person. Because joyful people never are led into sin because of me. So joy is the key to strength. Joy is the key to being blessed because we take no offense at Jesus. The joy that we celebrate today is not happy, happy, ha, ha, over a drink on St. Patrick's Day. The joy that we celebrate today has everything to do with strength and everything to do with Jesus, who is joy, and the impact that he wants to have on us. We have to remember that the body of Christ on earth is the church. How many people take offense at the church? How many people are led to, into sin because of the church? I'm not going to listen to that, Bishop. He doesn't sound like Pope Francis. That's the latest. <laughs> Nobody ever said, I like the bishop because he's just like Pope Benedict. I like the bishop because he's like Pope John Paul. I don't like him because he's not like Pope Francis. That is taking offense at the church. Being led into sin in terms of the respect and obedience owed the bishop being led into sin by the body of Christ, the church. Look at that scandal. Why should I believe anything anymore? My pastor hasn't given a good homily in 30 years. Pope Francis just said this week, isn't it a shame that people are so wrapped up within themselves and their own tastes and their own likes and their dislikes that they can't hear the homily anymore? I decided I didn't like that pastor 20 years ago, and I've never listened to one thing he said since. This is not you, but this is your friends. You know them. They take offense because of Jesus through his body, the church. They are led into sin because of Jesus' body, the church. The best way to help them, and these people, by the way, never have joy. They never have joy. They'd rather find fault and make themselves miserable. They're the ones that Pope Francis calls 
the sour pusses. They don't seem to know that he calls them sour pusses. They just know who's like Pope Francis and who they think isn't. So, the joy of the Lord, the key to our strength. The joy of the Lord, the key to never being led into sin on account of Jesus or the church. That joy is something with which you and I cannot live because in the end, that joy is Christ himself. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength, and praise be Jesus Christ.